Next thing we're going to look at is making changes to uh, your web pages. So you'll click on the web page, drop down over here, and then click on page tree. Um, so you should all have access um, to your school. And if you click this little plus button, that'll extend that menu even a little further. And there's a couple of pages that you'll see underneath your school that are there. If they are grayed out, it's because they are currently hidden, which means they're not live, they're not accessible by anyone uh, on the internet. And so, for example, this the getting ready for fourth grade would need to be changed to getting ready for third grade and so on and so forth. They're kind of archives from last year's uh, school system. Um, so you can, if you want to build a new page, you can you can work on one of these, or I can show you how to, if you click on this button, um, some of you will have permission to add a page. Currently, I don't think anybody does, but if that's something you want to do, I could give you that permission if you're comfortable working in that level. So let's just click over to the school page, um, and that'll open a editable version of the page. Um, you'll see as I hover over things, um, these drop-down menus will pop up, but you can't actually click them. It's just to kind of show you how the site would work if it was live. And then the next thing is these big purple boxes that show up. Um, those will be wrapped around your content areas. Your content areas uh, are, everything's kind of divided into sections. And the reason that we do that is so it's easier to move things around. Um, let's say, for example, that we had to take down the Montessori site for a certain amount of time. We could click hide on that. And then um, it would just be invisible. It wouldn't, it wouldn't post to the site. But then we could easily just click show and bring it back to life. Um, and so anytime you add new content, you're going to want to go down and click on this gray box for add block. Rich text editor is going to be your default. And then uh, you will be presented with this add rich text menu. So there is an option. You probably noticed it on some of these sections here, where if you click on them and they'll expand. That's how you're going to create um, what they call expand and collapse blocks. So if you click that, you can then add a title, and it'll show up just like the one I just showed you, or these, this one down here, where it's a yellow box, and then it has to be clicked on. It's a way to kind of add content that maybe everyone doesn't need, um, but it also calls out specific information for a specific audience. Um, but apart from that, this, most of these tools you're going to be familiar with from just basic word processing. Um, up here, you have, um, what do we call this? Here we go. Up here, you have your editing tools. So there's cut, copy, paste as plain text, paste with word formatting, undo, and redo. Now, um, anytime you paste anything, you're going to want to use this button here, the Paste This Plain Text button, and then paste it into that first. When you paste things into here, what it's actually doing is writing code. And so if you click this button, which you don't need to do, there's weird little artifacts and stuff that can make your text read a little bit wonky and your layout a little bit wonky. So if you do do that on accident and you want to just keep working, you can always highlight everything and click this Remove Formatting button, and that'll take care of it. But try to remember to use the Paste This Plain Text button. These are your linking tools. So there is just a general link button, um, all pretty straightforward if you want to put in a URL, or you can also um, create a link to a page on the site by just kind of clicking through and then selecting the About page and hit OK. Um, there's a link to file, and this is going to open up your file menu now. But anytime you want to link anything to a file or upload an image like that, you're going to get a menu that's pretty similar to this. Uh, straight away, if you already have your file uploaded, uh, you can just find it using the search tools, but most likely you're going to be adding a new file. So you'll click down here on Add File. Find your category, so whether it's a document or an image. Um, try not to upload. Everyone, by default, has a My Files 
category, try not to put things in there just because then it's it's not something I can access, so I can't make updates to it or anything like that. Um, so let's say it's a doc. We'll select a new file. And let's say we're going to put this fire drill in. Now, um, as far as naming conventions, with the exception of drill reports, if you could do me a favor and put the date in this format, so 2016, and then the month, and then the actual uh, numerical month date, um, and then a dash before every document you put in, that just helps me keep the archive organized. So let's say this is fire drill at BCC. Um, that's going to help out a lot. And then the other thing is description, and part of that has to do with um, ADA compliance and making sure that for anyone who has any kind of a disability, um, they get as much information from the website automatically as possible. So uh, generally, it's just got to be really basic. You can probably take the data out of that and just say, you know, FECC fire drill. And then hit OK. You'll find it in this list, but it'll also, anytime you add a file, it automatically puts the URL up here so you don't have to find it again. And then just click OK, and there's your link. Um, there's also the link to email. That's all straightforward. You just put an email address. If you want to have it pop up with a specific subject and a body for anyone who's writing the email, you can do that. Um, but that's not really necessary. So you just put the email in there, and then it'll make it an email link. Um, these are going to be your insert media tools. So let's say we want to put in a picture here. And then we'll go to Browse Images, Add a File. Now, as you can see, it's monstrous. So the main thing to keep in mind for uh, uploading pictures is that these things right here are going to give you your pixel size. You don't need to worry about that. Either uh, you're going to stick with percentages. So say you want it to stretch across uh, the entire width of the content area, you'll just do 100%. Do the height and hit OK. And then. Um, as you can see, it kind of fits right into that area. If you want it to be smaller, you can always right click and go to Image Properties. Let's put it at 25% width. Also change the alignment, put it on the right side, and hit OK. So now it's smaller. You can kind of wrap text around it. You can also click and drag this if you want to do that. Same goes for your other content. And you can make that a link too if you wanted to so on and so forth. Um, these tools you also will not use in the middle, or, or really any of this stuff. Uh, down here, your basic text formatting, bolding, underlining, italics. Um, you can add in numbered lists, bulleted lists. Um, I wouldn't really use block quotes. But the main thing, um, your biggest asset, rather, uh, is going to be this drop down over here for formatting. So, say we wanted to change this to make it um, a title format, you would just click on, click anywhere in the paragraph. Don't highlight the whole section because you can't just change certain parts within a section. Part of that again goes back to this uh, source code that it's writing. But click on the page or the section, and then change it over here to page title, and that whole section will change. If you want to just change it back, then you just change it back. Or we can change it back over to paragraph. So that's going to allow you to kind of create more complicated, richer content um, reasonably quickly. Um, and when you're done editing your area, if you're going to click on this direction, omnidirectional arrow, arrow, sorry, and then just drag it to wherever you want it on the page. If you want to put it all the way at the, up at the top, you can drag it right up to the top. 
Um, for now, I'm going to delete it because we don't need it. And then you would click Ready to Publish. Now, it's not going to publish automatically. Uh, an email will get sent to myself and to Bill, and then we'll have to go in and publish it for you. That allows us just to um, kind of make sure everything is where it needs to be, make sure that there aren't any strange uh, formatting things that the system automatically put in, unbeknownst to, to you or I. Um, and then I can just double check that real quick and make sure everything publishes and we're live and we're good and our links are all straight. 